Why these young Aussies are trying BDSM. You mean like a BDSM thing? Yeah. I mean, might as well see what all the fuss is about, right? Dom is kink vernacular for the dominant role in a BDSM encounter, or scene. Jody is anticipating taking the sub, or submissive, role. And it's this, not the fact that my friend wants to try BDSM, which stokes my intrigue. Jody is allowed, self-possessed clothing label owner and landlord. I cannot picture her being dominated by anyone. She will later inform me that she switched to the dom role and has found a sweet sub to be her manservant. He comes over to brush her hair and act as her footstool, among other things. If you had told me I'd be having this conversation a few years ago, I would have been scandalized. But that was before BDSM became ubiquitous within the under 35's singles scene. As Jody puts it, it's not good enough to be normal anymore. You have to be extreme. The catalyst for the change? There's the obvious, Fifty Shades may be roundly mocked within the BDSM community. But its role in eviscerating the taboo which once shrouded kink is irrefutable. The rise of anonymous dating apps has made it easy to scout for partners. While social media sites like Fit Life, the Facebook of BDSM, allow young kinksters to communicate online. Matt, 23 and Adam, is one of the cohort of Aussie young people using Tinder to scout for BDSM partners. He's hasn't encountered a lot of experienced female subs, but, there are lots of younger girls who have thought about it or dabbled. And they're happy to have me guide them through the experience. Sam, 28, says he's always had submissive tendencies, but it wasn't until seeing Fifty Shades that he considered exploring them in the bedroom. When he eventually matched with a professional dominatrix on Tinder, it was an awakening. I've always wanted to serve women, but I didn't have an opportunity to do that in my everyday life without it seeming creepy. He thinks BDSM's recent explosion in popularity is a great thing, because most people are probably like me they'd love it if they would just give it a try. Henry, 25, has always known he finds domination sexy. As a teenager he would see a scene in a movie where a woman was in charge and become excited.
He tells me about his first experience as a sub, I met a very experienced female dom through a friend, and she trained me on slave duty. I lived with her and was under her control 24-7 I was only allowed to go out to go to uni. I loved the idea that it was totally up to her if she wanted to punish or reward me for my behavior. Unlike Sam, Henry is a natural leader in day-to-day -day life. What turns me on is the release, the total ceding of control to someone else. Fifty Shades Darker has been credited with taking BDSM mainstream. I ask him if he thinks the recent influx of BDSM newbies is a good thing. Of course. I find all of my partners on Tinder, he chuckles. Both Sam and Henry feel that expressing their BDSM desires is beneficial to mental health. And they could be right. A Tilburg University study went some way to disproving the stigmatizing notion that kinksters are deviants whose desires stem from abuse or trauma. It found that those who practice BDSM actually have superior mental health to those who abstain. I asked Sarah, 27, who has just started experimenting with submitting to her boyfriend, what she feels is behind the recent rise in popularity. I think the embracing of feminism and the anti-slut shaming movement has a lot to do with it. Women are starting to feel much more comfortable with asking for what they want in the bedroom. The notion that if a woman enjoys wild sex, she must be a slut, is finally dying out. Of course, there are always going to be people who denigrate women and gender non-conforming people for actively pursuing their sexual fantasies. But according to Matt, those people are not going to be rewarded with satisfying sex. Matt says that sometimes people assume that because he's a dom, he is going to be forceful or coercive in the bedroom. It's actually the exact opposite. To be a good dom you have to make people feel 100 comfortable. Otherwise how can they relax and enjoy giving up control to you? I always make sure we discuss exactly what my sub does and doesn't want to do beforehand. And I enjoy giving them the experience they're looking for. Every one of the people I talk to stress the need for clear boundaries and rules to be set out before any scene, including the nominating of a safe word. Henry gives an example of why this is so important, I did a scene once where my boundaries were crossed. I was playing the cuckold, and the dominatrix brought out two other subs that I didn't know would be participating. The dominatrix proceeded to order the two male subs to have sex with Henry in ways which made him extremely uncomfortable. I asked
ask if he had a safe word. I did, but I was hesitant to use it. I didn't want to ruin anybody else's experience. In the end Henry says he was able to relax into the scene, but his experience illustrates one of the potential issues with young people simply. Jumping into BDSM with little prior experience. Matt explains, BDSM can be very hardcore, so it's extremely important that all parties are comfortable with what's about to go on. That means a lot of negotiating beforehand. So, is the influx in new kinkster recruits a good thing, or are we witnessing the deterioration of polite society? Of course it's a good thing. Quips Jody. Wouldn't it be worse if everyone stayed all pent up? This is stress relief. <laughs>